I'm here at the Basilica of the Sacred Heart in the Reliquary Chapel, and joining me is Father Peter Raka, who's actually the rector of the Basilica, and what a beautiful building we have here, first of all. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. So let's talk about the relics a little bit. What exactly qualifies a relic? Usually a relic is a part of a body of a holy person. So it could be something as simple as a small bone, perhaps a hair, perhaps even a tooth, but it's usually a body part of a saint. And this would be considered a first-class relic. Then there are two other classes of relics. Second-class relics would be considered those objects that perhaps a saint used or a saint wore. For example, the clothing that a particular saint uh, wore, uh, or perhaps a book or a pen or something like that that that, uh, the saint would have used. That would be considered a second-class relic. And then we also have in the church third-class relics, which are, let's say, a piece of cloth that is touched to a first-class relic. So obviously they are easier to acquire than, let's say, a first-class relic. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are, three very, there are three classes of relics that are usually venerated in the church. We don't adore relics, but we venerate them. And what they serve as, as a reminder to us of the holy man or woman who became a saint, who lived his life for Jesus Christ or her life. So they are are reminders to us of holy men and women who we believe intercede with God on our behalf. So when we see a relic, we think of that life of the saint that we are venerating and perhaps offer a prayer to that saint. And we know that the prayer of a holy person is very powerful in the presence of God. And so that's what we believe is intercessory prayer. Just like I might ask you to pray for me Mm -hmm. if I'm not feeling well. If we can do that with one another, we can certainly do it with the saints who are with God uh, to pray for us as well. That would they offer their prayer to God on our behalf. But a, a relic would remind us of a particular saint that we might feel particularly attracted to. Absolutely, and we're obviously surrounded by a number of relics right now, um, quite the collection. Uh, So tell me, how many uh, do we have here, and how'd you go about acquiring them? We have here in the Basilica over 1,600 relics. We probably, I would guess, this is probably one of the largest collections of relics of any church in the United States. I don't know if that for a fact, but I would guess it ranks up there pretty high. Most of these relics were acquired by Father Soren. He loved relics. And he said that relics are more precious than gold and silver. So for him, these are very precious remembrances of particular saints. And acquiring them, obviously, he was primary person. How did he go about them? He would, he, uh, as head of our order, uh, he would make many trips to Rome and he would secure these, these relics in Rome uh, for the chapel here. And this chapel was built in the 1880s, 1886 to 1888, specifically as a reliquary chapel. And last question, obviously, uh, there's from different time periods. Do we have any relics from Jesus's time? Yes, we have actually right here, uh, this cross, we have a relic of what is called the tr- uh, a relic of the true cross, a very small splinter of what we believe is the cross that Jesus died on. And this is a cross that we venerate every Good Friday when we uh, celebrate in a special way the, the death of Jesus on the cross. Wow, what a special treasure, as you said, more precious than silver and gold. Father, exactly. thank you so much for your time and obviously uh, something that people should come down and see for themselves if they're on the campus and certainly a treasure you guys have here. Thank